Hi, I'm Eric Weaver. For any of you who don't know, um, this is basically an effort of the ETC with support from some amazing vendors, including AWS, Planar, Disguise, Blackmagic. I can continue to go on. B&H has done some amazing donations for this. So we're here kind of to collect a series of talks about um, on-set virtual production. Um, and we're bringing out some of the best people in the industry to share their wisdom and their knowledge about this. And so all these will actually be collected up and uh, we will produce videos on them and um, put it in something called VETC, which is, this is actually I think the sixth year we've done VETC. So um, you'll be able to look at some of these videos. So I've got a wonderful person to start it off with. Addy, I'll you take it over. And I've actually known you for a little bit now when yeah. you were at uh, Yahoo. That's right. Yeah, Eric. So. Yeah. Th thank you for having me. Yeah. And ETC is such an integral part of the VP community. It's an honor to be here. And um, ETC is really um, at the core of educating the public on this upcoming new industry. So I represent Disguise. I'm the vice president of virtual production. And I'm going to go over what we do. Um, so right behind me. There is a very small LED volume. Um, we can power ones much, much bigger than this. The big overview is that we power an entire ecosystem, an entire platform, so you can use technologies like the one behind me, LED volumes, cameras, tracking systems, to tell your story. So we definitely make hardware. Uh, as you can see behind me, we have three types of servers. They're very high-end custom-made servers that are specifically designed to run incredibly high refresh rate, high resolution content for LED playback. And we have the render nodes, which are the RXs. They are specifically designed to run engines like Unreal or Unity. And we have VX nodes, which can manipulate the pixels once it's rendered. And finally, we have the GX nodes, which are more for live, live events and touring. So what we do is we create an ecosystem where we combine our hardware with a software on top of it to control the entire LED volume. If you ever put a system like this together, you'd know immediately that it's really incredible how much technology is packed in and how hard it is to control it all in one cohesive place. And we are sort of the hub in a hub and spoke of a volume like this. So all of the auxiliary technologies like camera tracking, lenses, sensors, LED controllers, uh, DMX lighting, pyro, you name it, will all come into Disguise. And Disguise will then put those controls at your fingertips. So somebody that we call a Disguise operator can then operate that technology during a live event or a shoot for a cinema or anything else that our technology is commonly used on. We support tons and tons of third-party technologies. We have actually started integrating technologies for over a decade now. So there's, there's just a small sample of the library that we support, you know, all types of GPUs and drivers, um, many different optical systems, markerless systems. Um, obviously all types of LED panels and controllers and you name it. Our library just keeps growing every day as we continue to make our presence bigger in this space. Next slide. And so now I want to switch gears and sort of talk about what Disguise does and how it differentiates from a typical setup. So in a typical Set up behind me, you see a really simple flowchart here where you have a primary render machine which is running something like Unreal Engine. And then to power an LED that's you know 8K or 12K or 16K, you actually can't do it with one machine. You have to break it out into multiple machines. We call them render nodes. So behind me here, it's a very simple end display setup where one primary machine controls multiple secondary machines, and those machines are directly hard tied into the LED processors. Those processors, what they do is they control the timing and the sync for the LED panels, the actual pixels. And so this is how it's set up in a very high level way, if you are ever curious to know. And there are some drawbacks to this. So 
obviously you're hardwiring everything from the GPU to the processor to the tile. It's all sort of one single chain. And what happens is in a given volume with enough complexity, you're going to have some something fail. And that happens a lot. And if it happens during a shoot, then you endanger losing tons of time, which equate to tons of money. So the other thing that's really difficult to do with a system, a typical system, is when you bring in lenses, when you have to calibrate for color, when you have to calibrate for spatial awareness, these calibrations do need to happen for you to u utilize the stage correctly. Those calibrations take time. So a lens could take you an hour to calibrate. So during a shoot, you're not changing lenses and you're limiting yourself uh, using such a setup. So with Disguise, it's a little bit different and I'll go over how. So we actually create um, almost a buffer between how the rendering happens and how those pixels are then used to serve the LED volume. So behind me here, you'll see a stack of servers that are the render cluster. Now those render clusters is just like how you know data centers typically perform very high compute renders. They're identical machines. You can run two at a time or you can run 200 at a time to render an image as large as 30,000 pixels wide or as small as you know 1,000 pixels wide. Then once that rendering is completed, it goes to our stack of servers for media management. So then we compute what the inner frustrum, the, what the camera sees versus the outer frustrum, what the lighting needs to be. And we can actually scale it and put more rendering power where it needs to be, where the camera can see. And all this intelligent scaling is happening on our media cluster. And then it's finally going on to the LED volume. So what we're essentially doing is we're creating an abstraction layer. Right down the middle, you have the technology which is sort of being handled by disguise. So you don't have to worry about it breaking down, taking up time, wasting money. And then on the right, you have the creative goals. So directors, cinematographers, storytellers can do what they want to do in the volume without having the volume. Next slide. Again, so because we create this abstraction layer, it's really easy to scale the rendering power up and down, change displays around, add new walls. Um, in a lot of shoots, you actually end up reconfiguring the tiles very quickly on set. And when you do that with a typical setup, it's actually almost next to impossible to do because it takes so much time to get it back up and running. But with Disguise, it's a matter of seconds, matter of minutes, that you have a new wall added or a new wall deleted, and so on. And if you throw up your Unreal scene and it's not running at a refresh rate that you want, you can just increase your rendering power, just throw more rendered nodes at it. So it's a really useful platform if you're trying to do the highest end of production, which has absolutely no tolerance for wasted time and wasted money. And of course, we run Unreal Engine in the best way it should be run. We always run vanilla Unreal Engine. All you do is you drop our plugin into the engine. Today, we support 5. Yesterday, we supported 4.27. And within 24 hours of when Unreal Engine 5 came out, we had our plugin out. So you can be sure that whatever scene that you have built by your artist in Unreal 5 is constantly supported and it can go up on that LED volume in a matter of minutes. The other big advantage to using a disguise setup is those calibrations. So if you do a lens calibration, it's 15 minutes, not one hour. If you do a color calibration, it's about 45 minutes or so. You know, it's not gonna take you forever. You can get it done and then you can move on and do your shoot. We are taking care of all those dull technical complexity for you and reducing it. And uh, I compare this to uh, the way a lot of electric cars like Tesla update their software. Uh, we don't do over-the-air updates. However, we do update our software every quarter. So the system that you have today is going to be better tomorrow than it is today. It's just how Disguise is constantly innovating, fixing bugs, 
adding new features. So if you buy a system today, tomorrow, that has inherently more value to it because you're just getting that engineering add-on every quarter. Our system is used quite a bit for um, some of the latest blockbusters. So if you've seen the new Batman movie and you've seen that rooftop scene, that rooftop was powered by a giant LED volume and Disguise was used to power that playback at an um, incredibly high frame rate and resolution. Some of the other movies that have used our system for virtual production behind me here, and this list just keeps growing every day because our systems are just so robust at this high-end level of production where you absolutely can't have any wasted time on set. We have a lot of stages around the world that use our technology. There's, these are just some behind me here, so I'll just go through them real quick. The big one that's closest to here is Mel's in Montreal. In LA, we have Nance Studios, um, constantly busy. And then around the world, we also have places in South Korea and Japan. Here's some more. I could just keep going on this, but <laughs> you get the point. We have a ton of stages that are using our technology to make content. And we, we make our clients successful by giving them platform that they can then use to uh, better their services for their clients. Next slide. So I want to wa talk about our most demanding install, which is in South Korea. And to date, I don't think anybody has a bigger pixel density in one VP volume than the set up behind me here. So we are running about 265 million pixels in real time. And this is what the curve volume looks like in our system. Uh, it's represented in this gray mesh. It's a test pattern. And next slide. And this is what it actually looks like. This is a photo of the stage in South Korea. It hasn't really been announced to the public yet, but we just completed this install. This is running 265 million pixels at 30 frames a second or 60 frames a second. Think about that much pixels needed and how Disguise can help you power it. And this is the same stage doing a car process shot. Next slide. And uh, our software is called uh, Designer. So we're on version 21. And some of the new features that have rolled out is the ability to record data from the shoot directly onto disk. So if you're moving a camera around, that camera data could be recorded with timecode striped to it. And we could record everything else on the timeline, things like lighting changes, panel changes, and so on. So we're giving you the tool sets you need to take the production assets on set during principal photography right into VFX. And this is sort of our footprint around the world. We are at about 300 stages. Um, and the number honestly keeps growing every week. Um, super excited to show you this one because it just goes to show how prevalent we are around the world. And we are an Epic Mega Grant winner. Unreal Epic is a partial owner, owner of our company and uh, we are heavily supported by their development team to make our products and our plugins work directly in engine. And all of our stuff comes with extensive care packages, support, guarantees, you name it. We back up every piece of hardware we make. Next slide. All right, Q&A time. All right. Oh, look, I'm getting a lot of it's sound hot. now. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to adjust the speaker eventually for the next one, but um, if anybody had any questions out there, anybody want to know anything more about this guy specifically? Yeah, what's next, Addy? <laughs> yeah, that's a great question. We are working on um, quite, a, quite a few number of things. So we are releasing a feature called Constant Calibration where it will eliminate that even 15 minute calibration. The system will constantly calibrate itself as you turn the camera on. So here's my other question for you. Um, I uh, mentored a wonderful young man for a while named Nan. Yes. How's Nan working out? <laughs> yes, uh, so for everybody who don't know, Nan is our in-house Unreal artist based in LA. 
uh, formerly from Eric's ETC camp, he's excellent. Yeah. He is such a hard worker. He understands engines so well, and most importantly, um, he takes direction well, and he delivers under pressure. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Um, if we don't have any questions out there, anybody, anything, anything? Nope. Well, let's call it a do for now. Thank you so much, Evan. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you.